Striker fired or hammer fired? Which one's better and what's the difference? Well, let's find out. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to Midwest Gunworks and our The More You Know series. Today we are going to be going over the differences between a striker fired and a hammer fired guns. We're going to be going over how each of them work without getting too far down the rabbit hole and then which one may be good for you, which one's better, and a little bit of everything in between. Now there are some awesome videos on YouTube that show a complete animation of a firearm and how it works down to every single step. If you really wanna dive into how a Glock works, how a 1911 works, how a SIG 226 works, I highly suggest checking those out. But let's get a general idea of how each of these guns work. So for a striker fired pistol example, we have a Shadow Systems MR920. This is based after a Glock. So pretty much every single part and how it functions is the same as any Glock that is on the market. So on this striker fired gun, there is technically three different safeties which we will go over. The first being the trigger itself. On the shoe, you will see this center pivot point that when you press it, clears the frame and the trigger can be pulled to the rear. The second safety in the operation is when you start to pull the trigger. So when you start to pull the trigger, you are moving a striker block out of the way of the firing pin. So what that's doing is blocking the striker. So when you pull this back, it's going to lift that striker block out of the rear. The third safety as you're pulling this trigger back is your trigger is holding on to the firing pin. So it's blocking. So without this trigger coming all the way to the end of your trigger pull and falling down out of its way, that firing pin cannot go forward and strike the primer. So the operation goes as this. Gun is cocked. You start to pull the trigger. This is moving the striker block out of the way and it is pulling your firing pin to the rear. So as you're pulling this trigger, it is pulling your firing pin back. As it's pulling it back, your trigger makes contact with your connector. As you're making contact with that connector, it is moving your trigger down and then when you get to that wall, the firing pin falls. So at that last moment, the the trigger comes down, the firing pin goes forward, it hits the primer, firearm goes off. So again, as you're pulling this back, moving the striker block, the trigger bar is coming back, it is hitting the connector, making its way down at the very end, goes off, your firing pin goes forward, hits your primer, firearm goes off. So now let's take a look at how a hammer fired gun works. Again, each different gun is going to be a little bit different. There's a lot going on, but this is the general idea of how a hammered fired pistol works. So for this example, we have a 1911 here. So a 1911 technically has two safeties. These two safeties include the grip safety. So if your hammer is back, your thumb safety is off, you've got this grip safety. If this is not engaged, you cannot fire. It is blocking this trigger bar, okay? So now I have a hold of the grip. Then I have a thumb safety. So this thumb safety is blocking the sear, not allowing me to fire this weapon. So now I have a hold of this gun, I have disengaged my thumb safety and I want to fire. So as I'm firing, I'm pulling my trigger back. As I pull my trigger back, it is hitting a disconnector and a sear. Now the way that the hammer fired gun works is the hammer has the tension. The hammer has the spring pressure from your main spring housing. So as I pull this back, I'm pulling this sear off of my hammer, bang. So now the sear disconnects from holding this hammer back. The hammer has the tension from the main spring housing, comes forward, hits the firing pin, which in turn hits the primer, and your handgun, your 1911, your hammer fired gun goes off. Now another style of hammer is the double action, single action. So as we looked at the 1911, that trigger is doing one job, 
dropping the hammer. On a double action hammer gun, the trigger is doing two jobs. So let's look at this P226 for example. So the hammer is back, I'm decocking to my double action pull. So my first trigger pull is going to be a double action pull. It's doing two things. As I pull this trigger, it's cocking the hammer. Then it goes off. So I decock, I'm cocking the hammer with my trigger pull, and then it goes off. But it is the same idea. The hammer is under tension. As I pull the trigger, it's pulling the sear from underneath the hammer. The hammer is falling, hitting my firing pin, hitting my primer. So now that we have looked at both the striker fired and the hammer fired, which one's better? Well, neither of them is better than the other. I just think it comes down to personal preference. There are pros and cons to both. Looking at a striker fired, the pros would be that you technically have three safeties on this Glock. Uh, the trigger has to be pulled for this firearm to go off. A con would be that the trigger isn't near as nice as some hammer fired guns. They do usually sit around that five, six pound trigger pull weight from the factory. Now you can fix that with some aftermarket options, but from the factory, that's what you're looking at. So now looking at, let's say a 1911, some of the pros would be a nice trigger. Um, 1911s are known for having the best trigger on the market for a handgun. It's a single action, it's very smooth, can be very light. Some cons may be you don't consider it as safe as a striker fired gun. And then the main factor, which one do you like more? There may be pros and cons to both, but maybe you like the all metal hammer fired pistols a lot more than a polymer striker fired. Maybe you like the newer polymer striker fired handguns with a red dot and a threaded barrel and you like that kind of setup more. Hey, you like it more, it works for you, you train with it, roll with it. Again, there's good and there's bad to everything out there. You need to go out and just test it. Find a buddy, go to a range, figure out how to get each one in your hands, test it, get used to it, see which one you feel more comfortable with and you're actually going to carry or use for home defense. Hope this video helped guys. We know it's not a super deep dive into this subject as you could literally talk about this for hours, but it's something for you to think about um, whether you're looking to add a new gun or start that collection. As always, if you have any questions, leave those below, hit that subscribe button and check us out at MidwestGunWorks.com.